we're interested in the, the work that transplace.com has done uh, to survey motor carriers, asking, ship, uh, asking them what they want and need from shippers in order to make their freight more appealing. Um, could you tell us what you found out? Uh, what are the most important things that a shipper can do to make themselves uh, more appealing to motor carriers right now? Yeah, absolutely. So last year, our customer advisory board, some of our key customers asked us, they said, hey, there's a lot of discussion about preferred shippers. Um, I know carriers are, are really concerned about their productivity, driver turnover is an issue. Um, so we, we held a couple of workshops with shippers who we knew were really, uh, who had really done some proactive things and had shown some initiative in this area and had preferred shipper programs. And then we also spoke with some carriers and we used that to really understand what was going on, uh, what was being done, what was being talked about. And uh, we did these workshops with carriers to really help us design the survey. So then following that, uh, we designed a survey. Uh, we went out to over 100 carriers, actually about 150 carriers, and got a real high response rate back. And then following the survey results, uh, we actually went back to some of the carriers and followed up with a discussion. So we compiled the results. And what was interesting is it was very consistent throughout the whole process. So what we heard from carriers uh, in designing the survey, what we heard in the carrier and the survey feedback, and then what we heard in post uh, survey discussions with carriers was consistent. And it remains consistent now a year later. And what really drives carriers is productivity, productivity of their network, productivity of the driver. And so we, we divided it into four quadrants. And as we talked to carriers, they said, you know, the first thing is uh, we look at a shipper. You know, what is their freight like? What's their network like? And, um, you know, do they have fair rates? Do they have fair accessorials? That's still very important. Um, then they looked at things like uh, the relationship, you know, kind of the opposite end. Um, do they talk with us? Do they solicit our opinion? Um, do they look to use other services we may have? So if we're a carrier and we also have intermodal, do they look at more than if we have warehousing? Do they look at those other services? And do we have a good relationship with them uh, kind of top to bottom? Then when we looked at the driver thing, Things, um, the driver friendly things were important like you know is there but it really tied back to productivity so while bathrooms are important surprisingly uh, you know Wi-Fi really has changed so there was a time when you know do you have Wi-Fi available now everyone's got a cell phone everyone can create a hotspot so that's less of an issue uh, but what we saw was the productivity things mattered um, when my driver gets to the gate you know, do they get good instructions on the status of the load and where to park? Is there parking available? With the changes in hours of service tied also with the electronic logs, parking's become a big issue because if I get there and the load's not ready, if I have, if the driver has to drive eight, 10 miles down the road uh, to a congested um, a truck stop, you know, that's all lost productivity. So um, we can go in more detail, but really what we saw was uh, what was key to the drivers, what was key to the carriers was productivity, uh, dwell time. You know, do you keep, it, it really all boils down to a lot of detail around it. Do you help me keep that truck moving? Because if I keep that truck moving, I'll make more money. The driver will make more money. And that's really key because we're talking about an industry uh, where drivers largely are not paid by the hour. Uh, they're paid by the activity. So if they're not moving, they're not making money. How important are rates in the scheme of things here? Uh, rates are important, you know, and, and um, you know, as carriers would say, are, are they fair rates? Am I, am I paid? Um, that's important. You know, if you have horrible rates and you have adequate parking, uh, you may have trouble getting loads. And so, you know, carriers, carriers understand their business better than they ever have. And um, they know what's a profitable lane, what's, a, you know, um, not all carriers, but they're more focused on that. You know, they really had to drive cost out. Uh, during the economic downturn, uh, you know, it was tough for carriers to have a good return on their investment. So they really focused on that. Most carriers have put a lot of attention on that. And so they're, they're aware of the rates. But that's just one part of the picture. Uh, but certainly we'd be kidding ourselves if we said rates didn't matter. Rates matter. Fair accessorial. Do you have a fair fuel surcharge? Um, will you will you let will you pay for detention if my if my uh, if my truck's detained? Uh, you know, do you have fair stop charges, etc.? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I think another thing you've done is some work on helping carriers design scorecards for shippers. Um, am I right? 
Yeah. Could you, could you talk a little about how these things, how a scorecard is, should, could be set up and what it measures exactly? Yeah, so I, I would say we've had a lot of discussion with carriers about it. Um, I still think, and this is one of the things we talk with carriers about individually and we talk about in our carrier conferences, I think most carriers or a lot of carriers still don't bring as much data to the discussion as they could. You know, if you contrast the railroads, the railroads will come meet with a shipper and they're going to have all sorts of information, you know, how profitable the lane is, um, you know, how what the dwell time is, they're going to talk about their capital investments. They're really going to educate shippers on what's going on with their industry. The LTL guys have had a lot of data. The LTL guys can come in and say, hey, you're operating at this level, or, you know, we need some help, or, you know, th those lanes are not good for us, but the others are. So net, net, your business is okay for us. But truckload carriers have really, for a lot of reasons, have not had that level of detail. Uh, more and more are, I would say it's, what our, what our research showed was probably about 50% of carriers have a shipper scorecard, and it may be formal or informal, um, so they kind of know how, how shippers rank, um, but it's very rare for them to share it with a shipper. So, um, you know, getting ready for this call, I talked to a bunch of carriers again, and, you know, it's almost unheard of for a carrier to give a shipper a scorecard. Now, um, we actually have some customers who want us to help them develop a scorecard that they then go out to carriers and share. But I think to this point, carriers have been, truckload carriers have really been reluctant uh, to kind of formally score their shippers. They may informally share some data, but um, you know, that whole leverage, the, the leverage has been on the shippers end, and I, I think carriers have been a little reluctant to share a scorecard. Mm. Well, but given the fact that we have a capacity shortage, do you see real change in the marketplace in terms of what shippers are doing to accommodate carriers and drivers? You know, I, I spent two thirds of my career on the shipper side. So I've worked for some large shippers as a you know, manager of transportation, a director of transportation, and then VP of transportation at, at some you know, very large shippers, you know, um, $3 billion, $16 billion companies. And, and then I've spent some time on consulting and now with a 3PL. So I've sat on both sides. And um, I really have come to the conclusion that shippers want to do more but they really don't know what to do. The industry's done kind of a poor job of telling shippers, um, here's what's important. It, it's been very informal. Uh, for instance, you know, the, there's not a checklist. You know, so much of what we do these days, there's a checklist or there's a scorecard. Or, you know, we've really become data driven and, and this shipper care relationship's not as data driven. Matter of fact, we've just launched an initiative to develop a uh, shipper checklist. So we want to give shippers a checklist that would say, um, here's what it means to be a preferred shipper of choice. Here's what you should do in the planning cycle. You know, are you open 24 seven? Very important to carriers. Uh, can I pick up on the weekends? Do you tender loads in Atlanta during congested traffic hours? You know, that, that, that's, not a, uh, that's not a very preferable thing to do. Um, are the trailers ready when, when my driver gets there? If the driver needs to pick up an empty, if it's an inbound load, is there, you know, is there an empty or have you loaded all the trailers and now they have to bobtail out and get a trailer and bring it back? You know, so there's all these things and there's not really good checklists. So we, we're working with some shippers and carriers and in about the next 30 days, as a follow on to this project, we're gonna come up with a checklist. And so it would tell carriers, here's what you need to do in planning. Um, here's a facility checklist. You know, when the driver shows up, um, you know, is there parking available? Are there restrooms? Uh, is the load ready? Um, you know, can the guard direct him to where to drop the empty and where to pick up the full or vice versa? So uh, we've been working with some carriers and we're gonna, we're gonna really come up with a checklist. I, on my shipper side, I know I took over transportation at a large paper company and uh, they had been decentralized. And so the plants, each plant kind of did their own thing. And there were, there were 60 plus plants. And so as I tried to talk to them about some of these things, there was just zero interest in investing. And I had to kind of say, 
hey, Ben thinks this is a good idea. You know, if I'd had an industry checklist that I could have gone to my boss, who was very reasonable, rational, and data-driven, um, if I could have gone to him and, and the business unit leaders and then to those plant managers and said, look, this isn't me saying it. Here's a checklist of things that we really need to do to make sure that we have capacity to service our customers. And as an industry, we need to keep drivers in this industry. Um, that would have been tremendously helpful. So we think that's a gap and, and we want to help kind of fill that gap working with some carrier and shipper partners. Okay, great. Thank you very much. One more final question. You, you talked about detention fees a moment ago. How commonplace are they right now, and do they um, uh, are they uh, effective in terms of uh, forcing um, change or, in, or decreasing the delays that drivers have? And uh, on the same token, uh, do you see carriers that are paying drivers for waiting? Um, yeah, those are those are both great questions. I, that's, I, I think it's important to look at both sides of that. So um, we probably see detention. Um, detention is ineffective, but it's the best thing we have. So the reason I say it's ineffective is is most shippers have a pretty active effort to refuse detention charges. So in other words, they they make it. Most shippers make it somewhat difficult for the carrier. You know, um, I know when I was a shipper, we, we would try to have contract terms that limited detention. We would um, require prior approval. Um, we would, you know, ask for documentation that you called us when the driver was detained. And, and all those, the shippers aren't necessarily trying to be unfair, but they, they have to show their due diligence. And so it becomes this real tug of war between the shipper and the carrier for most instances. So, you know, some shippers, I, I would put shippers in about three categories. There are a few who've put active programs in. So they, they it's cut and dried. When you arrive at a supplier or one of their facilities, you go on the clock and, you know, for every every amount over X, and some just pay detention, everything over 15 minutes, some over two hours, uh, but they'll pay detention and they've really, they've really, I think, done the right thing where if there's detention, they pay the carrier and then they use that in a scorecard against the supplier or the site to say, hey, you cost detention and we had to pay it. We, we're not going to do that. That's still far and away the exception. Most people fall into one of two camps which they almost never will approve detention. And so the carrier has to decide whether to fire them or not if it gets severe enough, or they they make it somewhat difficult. And and I'm probably overstating it, but but you know, it becomes this approval process that some shippers make very difficult, some make medium difficult, and some some play it pretty, I guess, pretty straight up. But but it's a uh, I think most carriers would tell you that um, you know, they they have to do a combination of filing for detention and possibly firing the shipper if it gets severe enough because they know they're going to have a, a, a difficult approval process often. Does that match what you hear? And um, uh, Well, I, yes. Um, I think more, more carriers, are, um, I think, want to use detention fees as a way of incentivizing their shippers. But uh, you're right. It's, a, it's problematic. Uh, it depends on your relationship with a shipper and how much yeah. you want to keep that freight. So there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, so more complicated than, than it sounds, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, you know, I think these are great questions. I, I think the shippers, you know, the shippers that we talk to, um, they really realize, first of all, they, you know, self-interest is always a driving motivator in anything. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of shippers are interested in being a preferred shipper because they realize that um, you know it's really going to be tied to access to capacity and rates, and they know that carriers are making choices, and when and capacity gets tight, you know they want to be sure and get that capacity. But I also think that a lot of shippers we talk to genuinely know that driver turnover is a challenge, and that as an industry we need to do a better job um, retaining drivers. And I really think that that 3PLs, carriers, um, you know, transport topics. Uh, industry associations, we probably need to give the shippers more support uh, to really make that factual case to their business. We need to probably do a better job of saying, here's what it means to be a preferred shipper and, and you know, give them something they can take back to their organization to help in that sale. All right, great. Ben, thank you very much. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you.